A very popular microphone among content creators, YouTubers, as well as filmmakers, recordists, boom ops, and even Foley artists is the Sennheiser MKH-50. And that's actually the microphone that you're hearing right now. Now, one of the people that we can thank for its growing in popularity on YouTube is Alan from Soundspeeds. He's a great professional boom op that has worked on a bunch of movies, some that I'm sure you've heard of. And he has a vast amount of knowledge when it comes to audio. So if you haven't checked him out, definitely go do that. Now, for a lot of people, the MKH-50 is just too expensive coming in at $1,200. So understandably, one question that I do get quite a bit is are there any cheaper alternatives to the MKH-50? One microphone that I do always think of when I hear that question is the Octava MK-0201. The particular model and kit that we're talking about today from Octava is considered the movie set kit. I've also heard it be called the filmmaker kit. So today I'm going to tell you about this small diaphragm condenser microphone that has a hypercardioid polar pattern. Now I've actually had this microphone for quite a while. I ordered it directly from Octava, so it was not sent to me for free. One of the cool things about this particular microphone is that you can exchange capsules on it. The different capsules you can get for this body include a small diaphragm cardioid, hypercardioid, and omnidirectional, as well as a medium diaphragm condenser microphone that does face the front which is actually a really cool option just to get all the different capsules and then you have four different microphones essentially. But the filmmaker kit that we're looking at today comes in around 270 US dollars. But the kit that comes with all of the capsules, I believe, comes in around 670 US dollars. But today's video is focused on the Octava. But as you've seen this last little bit, I've been switching back and forth between the MKH-50 and the Octava. Later in the video, I will also throw in some additional comparisons. And I'll also just do a back and forth comparison with a few small diaphragm condenser microphones. And I'll also throw in a couple shotgun microphones. But let me just briefly talk to you about a couple things when it comes to small diaphragm condenser microphones and shotgun microphones. A very common question that I get is should I use a small diaphragm condenser microphone or a shotgun microphone? Now like a lot of questions when it comes to audio is it depends. And if you want to play it a hundred percent safe, use shotgun microphones outside and use small diaphragm condensers inside. With no ifs, ands, or buts about it, you could follow that and you'd be happy. Now, while I'm explaining this, I figured I'd just go into an untreated room, show you how the Octava sounds in an untreated room, and also explain why maybe you don't want to use a shotgun microphone in an untreated room. So not only do I have the Octava plugged in, but I also have the Sennheiser MKH416, a thousand dollar shotgun microphone plugged in. Now when it comes to shotgun microphones, the way they are designed with their interference tube is that they are supposed to be good at capturing sound in front of them while reducing sounds coming in at other angles. And that's very ideal when it comes to outdoor use. However, when I'm in an untreated room and there are hard surfaces everywhere and my voice is bouncing off of those and entering the microphone relatively quickly, it can cause phase cancellation issues. This will make some frequencies dip and others cancel out. But overall, it would just leave you with a very unnatural sound. Now, pencil condensers aren't necessarily as directional and they aren't necessarily going to block out more noise. However, you won't run into as many phase issues with them. Now we're back in a treated room and here is how the MKH416 is supposed to sound when there aren't nearly as many reflections in a very controlled environment. And I do have the Octava plugged in also. And I do just wanna mention phase cancellation isn't always going to happen, but if you wanna play it safe, it is good to not use shotgun microphones indoors in untreated rooms. But now let me go ahead and talk to you about what comes in the box with the Octava MK0201. The Octava comes in a really nice wooden box. The hypercardioid capsule is initially detached. You just simply screw that on. It does come with a little mic clip. However, it does not come with a shock mount. This does also come with an attachable high pass filter that we'll test out in a little bit. I believe there is an option to also get a negative 10 decibel attenuation pad. Much like the high pass filter, it is attachable and not built in. Now when it comes to the build quality of the Octava, for a small diaphragm condenser microphone, I would say it is built very well. It feels really solid. I don't have any issues with it actually. It does have a little bit more heft to it than some other small diaphragm condensers. And when I said that the build quality and everything is good, let me just disclaim that I actually have read some stories online of the quality control at Octava not being great. 
but it does seem like they have a good support team and wherever you buy this from, just make sure they have a return policy. But this isn't something that would stop me from buying the Octava. It's just a note, just something to be weary of. Now, one thing I do want to mention is if you are going to be putting it on a boom pole and handling it, one thing you are going to definitely want is a shock mount. The one that I've used with it before is the road shock mount, but there are a lot out there that are really good. I'm no professional boom op, don't judge me. That's Alan's job from Sound Speeds. So listen to him on the boom op stuff, but I'm just telling you, get a shock mount if you're gonna handle it. I'm just going to run through some simple audio tests in a pretty well-treated room. Now I'm exactly three feet, 36 inches away from the Octava MK01201. Now I'm exactly two feet away from the Octava and here's how that sounds when I boost the gain in post a little bit. Now once again, I am one foot away from the Octava. This is the distance I've been away from it a majority of this video so far. Now I'm six inches away from the Octava and I'm trying to keep my air going past it rather than directly into it to avoid any plosives. Now in reality, you shouldn't be this close to a microphone like this, but currently I'm three inches away from it. And if I get even closer, you can tell that proximity effect, it just gets wild how bassy it is. Now usually this is where I would do a plosive test, but honestly, throwing some plosives into a microphone like this is just completely unfair. But with my air going past this microphone at eight inches away, I'll just throw a couple peas out there. Peter Pan, Picasso, Planters Pickled Peanutses. Now if I'm 14 inches away from this microphone, just completely on axis, and I throw a pretty rough P out there, Peanutses. You can tell it still picks up that air quite a bit. It's definitely one of those microphones that if you are going to use it a little bit closer than most people would, definitely use a pop filter. For instance, I'm six inches from the mic, I'm three inches from the pop filter. The pop filter is exactly in the middle. And plosive, plosive, we don't have any issues with the Hawken P110 in the middle. Now let's check the off-axis rejection. If the microphone is directly in front of me, here's how it sounds. Now I will slowly start turning the microphone to the side. Here is 90 degrees. Now I'll keep going. Now here is 180 degrees. Now I'll keep going to the other side. Here is 90 degrees on the other side. And now we are going to be back on axis here in just a second. This is the front of the microphone. To show you the off axis rejection as well as the polar pattern even more in depth, I will do a quick white noise test. Now one test that I did forget to do is testing out the attachable high pass filter that goes in between the body of the microphone and the capsule. Let's go ahead and give that a shot real quick. So here's the sound of the Octava with no high pass filter. Now let me go ahead and attach it. Now here's the sound of the Octava MK01201. It has that hypercardioid capsule and in between the capsule and the body, the high pass filter is now attached. So here's the sound of the high pass filter that comes with the movie set kit. Now just to give an emphasized example of this high pass filter, right now I am five inches from this microphone with the high pass filter. And now here's a quick example of this microphone with no high pass filter when I'm five inches away from it. Now if there's only one thing you take away from this video, only one audio test that really matters, I can't even express how important this next test is. Let's do a kitty purr test. Here is the female voice test of the Octava MK01201 recorded by the Zoom F3. And then here is the Sennheiser MKH50 also recorded by the Zoom F3. Now as the one music test that we will put in this video, let's do a quick acoustic guitar test. <laughs> Now we're going to jump into a back and forth comparison with several different microphones. This room is in fact well treated, so it should give you an accurate representation of how the microphones sound. So I am of course starting off with the Octava. It's a foot away from me right now, and I'm doing everything I possibly can to make sure that this is a very fair comparison. 
I will be the same distance away from the microphones I'm measuring every single time. Now, I of course wanted to disclaim that this room is treated, but I also am emphasizing it. So when I pull a shotgun microphone out, no one freaks the literal hell out. We are just comparing the actual sound of the microphone to each other. Obviously your room or your environment, your voice or what you are capturing, all are variables. But in my controlled environment, I just want to show you the results of these microphones. And during this, I will be recording all of the microphones into the Zoom F3. Now I have the Samson C02 plugged into the Zoom F3. It's exactly a foot away from me like the other microphones, but this microphone does come in a set of two. For the set, it's about $130. On Samson's website, it says that this is a cardioid microphone. However, the little image on the mic makes it look like it's a super cardioid microphone. Now I'm using one microphone that I really like, but I've never reviewed for some reason. This is the Audio-Technica AT875R. This is a super cardioid line gradient condenser microphone that goes for about $169. Now I have the Sennheiser MKH50 plugged in. It's the microphone from earlier in the video. It is also plugged into the Zoom F3, and once again, this microphone does come in at $1,200. Now we have the Sennheiser MKH416, a very popular shotgun microphone plugged in, and this microphone goes for around $1,000. Now I will say this microphone is used by a lot of YouTube YouTubers in a lot of rooms it probably shouldn't be used in. But speaking of YouTubers that use this microphone, Mike Delgadio from Booth Junkie, I think we all fell in love with this microphone when we heard it on his voice. In a voiceover booth like that, a microphone like this is perfectly fine in a treated room like this. We shouldn't have any phase issues. Now we have the SE7 plugged in. As of this review, it goes for around $119. This is a cardioid small diaphragm condenser microphone. The SE7 is pushed towards instruments, but also vocal applications. Now we have the Rode NTG3 plugged into the Zoom F3. And let me just say, this microphone runs way hotter than the previous microphones that have been plugged in. The NTG3 usually goes for $699. It is a line gradient condenser microphone with a super cardioid polar pattern. I almost forgot to put this microphone in the comparison, not because this microphone is forgettable, but just because I'm dealing with a lot of microphones in this comparison. So everything is set up the same. The only thing that is different is I'm wearing different clothes. But this microphone is the Deity S Mic 2S. It is an XLR short shotgun microphone with a super cardioid polar pattern, and it comes in at $319. But like the other microphones, I am a foot away from the Deity S Mic 2S, and it is being recorded by the Zoom F3. Once again, here is the Samson C02. Just one of them plugged in here. The other one's off, I think, making a move on the Octava, maybe? I don't know. But here's how this sounds one foot away from me. Once again, here is the MK. H50 from Sennheiser plugged in. It is a super cardioid microphone rather than a hypercardioid like the Octava. Once again, we have the SE7, not to be confused with the SE V7, which is a handheld dynamic microphone, but here's how the SE7 sounds a foot away from me. Once again, we have the Deity S Mic 2S. Here's how that sounds a foot away from me going into the Zoom F3. Now we are back on the hypercardioid Octava MK0201, and here's how this sounds when I'm a foot away from it going into the Zoom F3. Once again, we have the Audio-Technica at 875 R plugged in going into the Zoom F3, a foot away from me. Once again, here is the Rode NTG3 shotgun microphone. It's actually a mic that people have wanted me to compare to the MKH416, and that's part of the reason I included it in this video. Here's an additional test for the MKH416. I will note that the NTG3 did run quite a bit hotter than the 416. Not super important here, but uh, it's just something for me to say that's a little bit different from the repetitive stuff that I've been doing. Okay, one more quick test with the Audio-Technica AT875R, the $169 microphone that's going into the Zoom F3. Now we have the SE7 going into the Zoom F3, and here's how it sounds a foot away. Once again, this is the Octava small diaphragm condenser microphone going into the Zoom F3. Once again, here is the Sennheiser MKH50 when I'm a foot away from it. Now we are back on the Rode NTG3, what is considered a broadcast shotgun microphone. And here's how it sounds when I'm a foot away from it going into the Zoom F3. Here's one additional test for the Samson C02 going into the Zoom F3. And here's the sound of that. Now here is the Sennheiser MKH416. Once again, $1,000. 
going into the Zoom F3 a foot away from me. Once again, here is the Deity Short Shotgun Microphone, the s Mic 2S, and here's how it sounds in a treated room. One last time, here is the sound of the Rode NTG3 when I'm in a treated room a foot away from it. One last time, this is the Octava Microphone, the Hypercardioid Small Diaphragm Condenser Mic. Now here is one last test for the MKH416 with me a foot away from it and it going into the Zoom F3. One last time, here is the Supercardioid MKH50 from Sennheiser, and here's how it sounds when I'm a foot away from it. One last time, here is the Deity S Mic 2S, the short shotgun microphone that goes for $319. One more quick test with the Audio Technica AT875R. Here is one last test for the Samson C02 that comes in around $130. And here's how it sounds in a treated room. One last time, here is the SE7 going into the Zoom F3. Here's how this sounds. Now to jump into my review of the Octava MK0201, I'm just going to cut to the chase on this one. Do I like this microphone? Do I recommend it? And that's a big ol' hell yeah. I just really like this microphone. I think that as an indoor dialogue microphone, at $300, this is a good deal. I think it is a great, cheaper option to the MKH-50. I mean, no, the Octava doesn't sound the same as the MKH-50, but it has its own sound and its sound is good. I feel like this microphone could sound really good on a lot of different voices. I could see it maybe being a bit overwhelming on really deep voices. However, I feel like it would really balance out higher voices and make them sound a lot more pleasant. Voices like mine that are a little bit higher, I feel like the Octava works well for them. But I will also mention, I think it's very usable on acoustic guitar. I just want to get it a little closer to me right now. Just give it a little kissy. Now, some people might not agree with this statement, but with all microphones, there is such thing as being too close to them. And for the Octava, I think the closest you really should be to it is about six inches away. Right now, I'm eight inches away from the microphone, and I would say if I get much closer to it, it's going to be too boomy and also way more susceptible to air, even though it is angled and a little further away. So if you are a person that wants a microphone right in their face, right in their camera shot, just have that intimate podcast microphone person feel, this is not your mic. Could you record a podcast with this? Yeah, you definitely could. I would do it at this distance. This is how I would do a podcast with this. Now, if you are thinking about getting this microphone and you are going to be moving it around in any way, shape, or form, I would recommend getting a shock mount. Even if you're going to use it like this where it is on your desk and you could hit your desk, I would recommend getting a shock mount. I always leave it in a shock mount. It would be awesome if it came with a shock mount. I think the Octava does have one on their site that is relatively inexpensive. I can't say I recommend it. I have never tried it. But if they could just include that shock mount with this microphone set, even if they did raise the price 20 bucks, I think that'd be a great addition. Assuming that the shock mount is decent. <laughs> but to sum it up, this is just a really great, no frills microphone. It's very simple and it just works. It sounds good. But let's give this thing a BB saw rating. And yes, I'm going to be a little bit high on it. I will admit that. I'm going to give it a 9. The reason I'm giving it a 9 and not a 10 is because there are a lot of inexpensive microphones out there that are like this that have a negative 10, negative 20 decibel attenuation pad built in, have a high pass filter built in. I would have loved to see that here. Also, if the shock mount was included for that price, I would love it. I think that'd be great. Also, also, the quality control concerns that I have for Octava bring it down a little bit, but I mean a 9 is still just a hell of a rating for this microphone. So I do highly recommend the Octava MK0201 Movie Set Kit. <laughs> I think this is a really solid product and it makes me want to try out more Octava stuff. But thank you all for watching this Octava review. I hope it helped you out. Helped you decide if you want to get one of these or not, but most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for more videos, reviews, comparisons, and I'm also going to throw in some more live streams coming up. I want to say a big thank you to you for watching this, and even bigger thank you to the people that subscribe, and the biggest thank you to all the Audio Hotline members. If I could give you all a BB Saw rating, it'd be a 6.9 because you're so sexy. I'm joking. You're a dime. You're a 10, baby. You're all 10s in my eyes. But thanks again for watching. I'll see all you audio nerds next time.